Hello, 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 and welcome back, everyone, to NECC Ambassador. We had new casters coming up, so that's what we did indeed. Oh, you've obviously got myself. Don't even need to introduce myself. Next to me is the beautiful man stage, either that direction or that direction, whichever one. He's still there. I I was happy to be here. I'm happy to be on your left or right as long as I am next to you, Hyferia. And speaking of being next to both of us, we are going to be sending a game or casting a game rather for Juniata College and Center College, both of them here in Challengers, which is the second division at the NECC. And I tell you, this has kind of got some stakes to it. Both these teams looking to... uh Get out of the lower end. Uh, Juniata College has been having a pretty rough time this season so far. And currently their record kind of reminds me of Fortnite in the way that it's just a lot of the Eldans going on and it's not <laughs> looking that great right now. They've currently taken five losses, one game five loss against Arcadia. So they really need to bounce back quickly. So otherwise it could just all go down the drain here. The center, they're kind of in that same boat. They've only got one win on the board. It's it, And from neither side, it's something you would call a stellar season for them. And this is the time to regain. Now. On the flip side of it, though, if we take a look at the head-to-head -head matchups that they have played against similar teams, we talked about uh, Juniata going to five games against Arcadia. Center also played against Arcadia in week one, but uh, got swept by them. So if you're just looking in that direction, then uh, we'd assume that Juniata's got an advantage. But uh, Juniata went, got swept by JW Blue in week four, and Center went one and three against them in week two. So it's not a huge difference. It's not a huge change, but it does tell you that they can have better performances against different schools who have still beaten them. So ultimately, I think this is going to be a remarkably even matchup. Oh, for sure. That is one that uh, is just set in stone already. That It's going to be an even matchup, and neither team are really going to be coming out easy and a sweep i don't think it's going to be happening i i have no clue though something that that record tells me is that they're both just a little bit inconsistent in the way that they can't really finish out an entire series because we do see a few games won here and there on the side of juniata and then also on the side of center there are a few games win here and there but they just can't manage to close out a series well Either of them is going to have to close out a series today. What about you? What, what, who do you think will get the win? I So one of the things that I think you talked about consistency before, even though we have seen a series won by center, I think just the smattering of wins across the board and almost all of their matchups means that Juniata is going to take this in five. Oh, game five. Interesting. I like it very much. I always love a game five prediction. Now, whether it actually is going to come true, there, there's only one real way to find out. I, I do love that there's a team named Howard as well in the in the league who have also got into the close qualifiers for the grid, but that's something completely different. And I don't think Howard were going for the same kind of joke as the European how we're going for. Anyway, rambling off topic, rambling off whatever <laughs> is going on and whatever is in front of us, just my thoughts going in. Juniata versus Center College, about to be started here. You said a game five, I'm going to say a game four here. Game four win for Center College. They've already got a win on the record. They'll take another one. We are in the challenge of the vision, obviously. Division number two. Let's get it kicked off. All right, starting off with a pretty solid kickoff for Center College. They're going to assume possession. Loaf getting the 50-50 out towards his own net, unfortunate, though. Zapakis picking this one up. CCRL captain there to pick up the ball as well, receiving the pass. A lot of possession, but not clean possession for Center as they're struggling to get it out of their own half. These 50-50 challenges by Juniata College are very oppressive so far. Yeah, it's really been centered basically in their own half the entire time, but all it takes is one breakout, one breakaway, and then you can concede a goal just out of nowhere. Blade was looking to do so there. Managed to steal the corner boost, so an unknown route is a indeed unknown route. Bump and shoot out of the way. Allows Zapatas to take a shot. Yeah, it's going to be denied by unknown route. Manages to get back in time, and now Loaf. <laughs> 
Oh, away. so close to the net on that one. The dunk. But that's going to lead to a little bit of a counterattack opportunity. They're pretty close in space on Juniata. It leads to just the ball getting stopped in no man's land, stopped in the midfield. Good challenges, good dunks by Juniata. It's keeping the pressure up, but there's leaving so much space after the touch that it's just leaving the ball there for anyone to grab. Uh, Zappacas, once again from that defensive third. Not a lot of boost in attack, struggling to get past, and that's been a, a ordeal for center pretty much the entire time, where they struggle to get past pretty much the entire time. They haven't really had any fruitful opportunities. Now Pinch going towards the midfield. Blade it will intercept, and now Captain once again has to get for, get away from that defensive side. It's really not looking good for Junialta either, since they're not able to break through, even though pretty much the entire time they're on offense. I feel like Juniata is playing more on offense, like you're saying, but just not being able to punch through. Unknown Root tries to bulldoze the offense on that one. Not getting through again. The defense is impermeable for center. This is truly the unstoppable force and the immovable object here. I mean, I, I recently learned that those are the exact same things, just named differently. It's, it's kind of like... I want to say bank and couch, but that is not that is something just completely mistranslating and whatever blade Oh my word. What is that touch? That's going straight in towards the center Shoe has to bail, bail him out and that 30 boots remaining can't really get a follow-up touch But if everybody misses he very much can loaf out to the side He will try and get the bread indeed as he's looking to get this one in towards the opposing half It's been three minutes without a goal happening, but it might just happen here dropping in towards the center on no route clears it out though Clearing it out, Zapakis on the back wall, but even you talk about these you know, unstoppable force and immovable objects being the same thing. That's what I'm seeing on these two teams. They're having so many opportunities, so many crazy touches, but not able to capitalize that 0-0 zero, zero is just a mark, just a side effect of remarkable play, excellent rotations, and good heads-up defense by both teams. And even the pressure that Ju uh, Juniata is trying to make is just not capitalizing and these 50 50s are so impossible to handle for either team it's been an absolute deadlock of a game and oh, oh my word oh, <laughs> that was the perfect opportunity to just completely prove me wrong and not have it be a deadlock game anymore but the most phenomenal opportunity missed out by caps and he's going to be kicking himself for that because this is looking as if it will just be that one goal game Golden goal scenario could already be in effect without the players actually knowing it. Low with an early challenge, decides to back down early. And smart decision because Blade is going on the counter attack. 100 boost for remaining, gets it in towards the center, or would have gotten it into the center had it not been for the final defender. Now, center, they're also going on the counter. Once again, misses up the wazoo. A loaf into the center he goes. Captain has an opportunity. Puts it on the backboard, and that should be a clear out for Juniata. Never mind. I don't know how this Ooh. is a goal. They punished the over rotation. There was just one whiff on there from Shu, and then everybody trying to compensate. Zapak is there to punish. Finally getting some kind of ground in this enormously defensive game. That could be what it takes to get center out and ahead and lead you on the path of the right prediction. It might just be, but it's not really the way I would like to see my prediction being proven right, since it's, it's a little bit of a scrappy, a little bit of a messy goal here. And that's not the the soccer player messy, that's just the, the word messy. <laughs> and they're loaf for 30 seconds remaining. They just need to hold on, they can just kind of sit back, what well, they've been doing pretty much the entire time, sit back, let the shots come at them, and then clear them out, but they do need to clear them out, and that is the wrong target to be clearing out, and that allows a way for Blade to take a shot, and oh my word, once again, a scrappy goal. Hyfe, I've talked about these teams being basically the same, and I feel like that's the same story of a goal. Just a little bit of a double commit, a couple of whiffs, a little bit of friendly fire, and this time Juniata is the one who's taking it away and putting us back in that golden goal scenario. Oh my, I, th I thought this might just be a one goal game, but it's already two, and it's at least going to be three. And obviously, there's one goal on either side. Simple, basic math. It's going to put that at a tiebreaker of three goals, but it might just happen in regulation. Instead of going to overtime, Captain is able to clear it out. But on the route, puts that right back in. Is there anybody there for the second touch? Blade just gets ed edged out by Zapatas. Zapacas slightly. And overtime, we have.
Now, this overtime is incredibly crucial for setting the pace of the match, but even more than that, both of these teams are playing at the exact same tempo, and the first to step it up or change their tempo is not only going to take this goal, they're going to set the tone for the rest of this match, and that is incredibly important. Lofier in his own corner yeah, gets the stolen away, but again, they're playing it so slow, so safe, one of these teams has to step it up. Yeah, really, that is really the case, and... This kind of shows how their record might have come about since they're not really putting on that much pressure. You see them both kind of shelling back in defense, wanting to have the opponent come at them and then go on that counter. Well, that's not really going to win you games if the counter is not really that threatening. And Zuppakis can't really get anything going. We'll get beat out by Blade. Now on the route with a good 50, drop it straight back into the center. Zopakis has to, to do something about it. Does indeed do so, but then misses the ball completely. Captain has to bail him out once again. A little of uncharacteristic misses coming in here. And once again, Zopakis, and then that allows an opportunity for an unknown route. Puts it wide, puts it over, I should say. And also, once again, a opportunity not capitalized upon. And I know what you're talking about. The, the one thing I am not seeing here from either team, you talk about pressure. They're putting a lot of the ball in the opposing territory. They're doing a lot of, like, kind of semi-shooting, looking for a musty flick there from Loaf, trying to set this off. But nothing that they do is making it awkward for the defense. There's always just a clean out on this as once again dunked to the corner as a pack is looking with the pass into loaf it's not going to get out though and shu gets the 50 50 trickling out towards ccro captain ccro captain for center trying to get this downfield it's out into open field and he's going to chase this one down will there be anything that he can do with it doesn't look that way it doesn't look that way and that, that has been kind of the, the name of the game here throughout the entire series that they have an opportunity can they bring it to fruition well this time he very much can on the route takes the known route to the back of the net two minutes into overtime and it is juniata with the first win Solid solo play out of Unknown Route, just taking it off the wall, the best teammate in Rocket League, in my opinion, and sneaking it by two defenders. But a good way to close that out for Juniata, starting some excellently needed momentum, but it's going to take a lot of work for them to get forward and to break this out. I don't feel like anybody has mixed up the tempo yet. I don't feel like anybody has started to take the air earlier, and... I feel like that's just going to lead to a lot more of this scrappy defensive gameplay that leads to low scoring games. Yeah, we, we really see a lot of mistakes coming in and, and kind of low scoring games, as you said. And that is because they're not putting themselves out there. They're not really trying to create a lot of opportunities. They're just wanting to sit back and, and relax a little bit. And that's not really going to work out. I mean, it, it did this time for Juniata, but center, they've got four shots, one goal out of it. If they're opting for this strategy, they need a better conversion rate as Al Juniata, they just put more shots on target. Absolutely. Now, I think that there's one way that I would characterize both these teams' gameplay so far, and that's comfortable. But I don't feel like Rocket League is a game where you can get away with just being comfortable all the time. If you do, that's how you get stuck in a rank. You have to break your comfort zone. You have to play a little bit faster or slower than you feel comfortable. And I want to see one of these teams do that. Yeah, it's kind of like walking through a dark alley. You shouldn't be feeling comfortable because otherwise something terrible is going to happen. So always, always stay uncomfortable. Have that anxiety completely ruin you. <laughs> also, don't do that. <laughs> the, the disclaimer, don't do that. Now, Captain, oh my word, oh no, no, it looks to make it real uncomfortable for the opponents. Now, shoot, hits it back and towards Blade, but this is what I mean. Blade just sitting back. The communication is not quite there, and they're already wanting to kind of sit back on that defensive side. Double commit coming in from Loaf and Zuppakis. Does get dealt with, and now Captain, can he actually get on the counter? Early challenge by Shu is going to send that right back to the backboard. No challenge coming in allows an easy clear out for Zuppakis. CZR captain off the sidewall here. A lot of these solo plays are the name of the game. Trying to just have one player go in. There's the passing play off the 50-50 blade, breaking the silence with this shot, making it 1-0. Once again, Junior, so they're off to the lead now. It's just getting away from center a little bit. And with that first game happening, Junior, also have kind of proved my prediction to be right thus far. Currently, 
And Juniata are looking to continue that momentum as this is a decent kickoff. Louv will, able, will be able to clear it out to the side. Now, can Louv actually do something else with it? Gets bombed by Shu in the behind. And Captain Bedoinks it up. That's just a layup for Blade, and Blade rips a short into the back of the net. That is not a good choice there. I don't know exactly what Captain was doing with that play. Uh, bl kind of set up Blade for that one with just the pop forward. Needs to look behind him and see that there's a player there, but uh, it's definitely a panic mode play, and I can I can respect that. That's the kind of thing that I do all the time. Mm-hmm. Oh my, I was taking a sip of water. I wasn't expecting this to be happening. Um, well, then I can use myself as a metaphor right now. Currently, Sensor, they're taking a sip of water as well, and they need to swallow it incredibly quickly because they don't seem to be ready for whatever Juniata is throwing their way. And they really need to get it together as Juniata. They're pressing the issue already once again. Juniata really focusing on that corner ball with Shu there, just making so much pressure. Finally getting the shot out from the corner, but keeping that away for now center very crowded around the ball very much low on boost they're just trying to find a moment to breathe to swallow that water if you will and it's not coming out just yet eventually they might just have the water come out their nose if they start laughing too much now we're a little bit of a Guantanamo Bay, some waterboarding going on or whatever. You, you don't know. You, you, there's a lot of things that you can do with water these days. People are getting real inventive, real creative. And maybe they just need to bring a water gun on, in, onto this fight and kind of splash their opponent's eyes a little bit, sand dust or whatever. At least something to give them an edge because currently they don't have an edge in whatever Juniata is bringing at them. Juniata is... Just being better in every category, attacking-wise, defensive-wise. Center, they ha need to have a player step it up massively. Yeah, center is all about those solo plays so far. And oh no, when they try in teamwork, it just turns into a bit of a bump. But now with Loaf out of the play for the moment, this might open the doors. A pack is going to take it out of his own corner, trying to chase this. There's not going to be enough room. It opens it too far away from himself. Captain this time taking it to the corner, but so far away from it once again, missing it off the wall. And that's going to be so much time for Juniata to do whatever they want. Once again, with a solo play down the side, beating one defender and Captain there to knock it away. But no room to breathe for center. Oh my, Blade, oh my! Just getting denied at the final second by Zuppikis. This is a decent pinch for a center, going right in towards the opposing side. Blade is able to catch up to the ball. Potentially clear it out to the side. Zero boost in the tank doesn't allow him a massive clear. Now, Shu, he is last man back. Needs to get a proper clear. This time is ticking for center right here. We do have a rule one, so scoring should be a little bit easier in a 2v2 scenario. You really got to move on not miss the ball both of you please keep them in that rule one i i absolutely love this the ball is literally on top of their car everybody still moves around it's up because it won't be one against shoe for a brief moment that shoe breaks away can he get a shot yes he very much can and that rule one will now be broken and juniata has broken center here as well we talked about these teams being basically the exact same in the first game. This time, it doesn't appear to have the same narrative, but with the rule one in place with two cars just bashing against each other, you kind of do get a little bit of that similarity as two players out of the game momentarily finally opens another goal for Juniata. Oh my, no, Rowie doesn't have any respect left anymore. Just throws a demo on that final keeper. And Capson off the backboard. If you want to make that comeback in a minute, three goal comeback, you're going to be putting on the boosters to your car. Shoot, might just give them an opportunity here. See, uh, Capson indeed is going for the demo. No round manages to dodge it and get the save out. And then a lot of demos happened, and the entire offense just gone, sent back to their own half. And goodbye. Have a good one. See you later. Shoot, can't rip the show and put one in. Completely disrespecting, but Junior Arts are still looking poised to win. That kind of disrespect is the kind of play that I love to see from Juniata. Going out there for the demolition, going out there for the physical plays, getting Shu by the goal, giving him one more. But that is the way that you win. You don't win by giving your opponents free respect. You yeah, always put some respect on my name kind of, kind of situation. You always got to force the respect. You can't start out by giving your opponent a massive amount of respect. Mm. Now with 20 seconds remaining, it is really Juniata 
forcing Sensor's hand here, and Sensor are going to have to start thinking about the next game, really have to start thinking about how they can make that comeback. And, well, it's mainly just being more offensive. They currently have one shot on target. It's just not good enough. Even if they had a 100% conversion rate, obviously, they still would have lost here. I think at this point, you know, when you're down two games in a series, in a series where you expect it to be really close, and after the first game, it doesn't look that way, I think with center, there's a lot of the mental game that comes into play. Like, Rocket League is very much a mechanical game. It's very much the kind of thing that's just all about your, your hands, your mechanics, and everything like that being warm. But there's just an equal amount of it that's mental. And I feel like right now, center is just having a hard time with that because every time they try and go out there, make a solo play, do anything, it feels like they're getting punished. And even when they, well, we saw that one opportunity that actually I think led to that one shot that they have. Instead of taking a clear head and saying, look, we should probably only send one of the one of us at this. They double commits, then they got a little bit too greedy. And then all the few opportunities that you do get are just squandered by your own kind of way and that is something you always play against yourself in rocket league as well you have to make sure that you stay out of your teammates way since are not currently doing that now i have to ask you though do you think if we talk about their comms if we talk about the social interaction of rocket league do you think they are dead silent or do you think they're talking over each other because i feel like that is how you get those double commits i must assume Either they're talking over each other about whatever is going on, I, I, I don't know. But it seems more the case that they're just silent and Zuppikis, he wants to just get another player in here, probably press the wrong button on the controller, getting the, the second player to join up. So Zuppikis might actually be playing his split screen right now. I always have that when I charge my controller. And that's another disadvantage that they definitely cannot deal with here. But, you know, maybe that's the kind of perspective switch you need. L a literal camera change, a literal perspective change that will get you out of the mentality that you were in. Zapakis gets the clear out of his own back half. Gets up to Loaf. Loaf trying to find power. Not going to find it. Looking for a flick. Unknown route. Not able to get the juice on it that he wants. And that's a big clear. The first of many for center. Imagine uh, the second uh, account of Zapakis joining getting out somewhere up high in the field as soon as he gets into a 1v1 kind of sees that every positioning and pop back into the boot of your opponent and flick them easy claps that's what you can do with split screen i mean it's, it, in reality it's only going to make everything worse since you have a smaller screen it's harder to deal with it's just throwing you off massively but currently it's actually somewhat working out for sensor as they haven't conceded just yet even though as weird as it sounds that's already a, a little bit of a victory for sensor here Absolutely. Oh, just barely across the net, but there's nobody there to pick it up. A bit of a whiff there for Juniata. Juniata trying to control this, slow it down. It's a nice pop in front of the net, but Blade is there to pick up on it. Out to Unknown Root, tries to follow it. That's an unfortunate no clear away. And Juniata preparing for the sweep. Yeah, this could be that situation where you very much would have loved to not have your screen be split screen. But he hasn't exited out of it just yet, so maybe it's not even split screen and we're just making up stories here for the entertainment. That's basically what we do anyway, right? We, we make up stories for the entertainment of everyone. And there's one undeniable fact right now, and that is that Juniata might just take this home in a sweep. Absolutely. That's the undeniable part of it. We can make up as many stories as we want to, but we cannot make up this scoreline. You can't even say that this game was staged. Okay, with that little cheap joke aside, CCR captain trying to dribble this one out, but he was the last man back. There's nobody home. That's just going to be a counterattack. Oh my god, the save on the goal line. Oh my word, that was an absolutely ridiculous line of play. Now Loaf on the defensive side, they still need to break out and there's no boost in the tank whatsoever. Blade taking that out to the side, Captain finally is able to resume control off the backboard. Can he actually read this first? It's a double triple commit. Oh my, I don't know what's going on anymore. Pumps happening all the way and it's on no route who comes away with the ball. Well, but also able to take it off the wall, rips the shore, Zapakis. He's able to make the save, but it's still... Well, center, they've got an opportunity already on the board. Juniata, they raise you with seven opportunities. 
This is just absolutely brutal. Juniata is still holding this one out ahead. So many shots on net from them and still only one shot from center. Blade getting it around two, but there's the last man back. CCRL captain once again for center. Tries to get this down, beating the air. Zapakis out in the net. Not gonna find that one quick. Just slightly beat on the 50-50, but that's a huge opening. CCRL captain gets it off the backboard and leads to find one. Nobody's home to pick it up, and Lope tries to pinch this in, but it's going to die on the wall instead. Oh my, now captain in a 1v1 situation. Captain not in a 1v1 situation anymore. A good boy, captain, will be there at your funeral. You've already respawned, so no need for a funeral. And still taken out to the side by Lope, and with less than two minutes remaining, they have to get something going very, very quickly, but not a double command on goal line. That's not what they're looking for. And then Rao with 30 boost remaining, looking to stay and just being an absolute nuisance for an awkward pass back. Blaze reads it, reads it with perfection. She moves to get it towards the center, and nobody there to finish it off. Still not a position that center would like to be in right now this position for center is just so incredibly dire even if it feels like they're doing a great job of keeping it out of net they're not finding the shots they can't even get it down on the opposing side of the field juniata's side of the field is basically a no fly zone at this point ccr captain with a big flick from midfield though all right on the goal line he's going to punch it through for the equalizer call it the caster's cursor call it the captain taking the ship where he wants it oh my that is now a start for center. We have seen this situation before heading into that final minute where it was 1-0 and then oh, Zuppik has finally fixed that split screen error that he has indeed left the match. Although for that defensive side, if they can do it with split screen, they might just be able to close out the match here with one minute remain. It's definitely doable to, for this to just end in regulation. I'm a little bit afraid for center, but am I really though? Blade would be making a good save off the line. Blade trying to counterattack on this too. He's only got one one-on-one -on -one situation off the corner. Loaf gets a great read to put that one away. Zapak is following it up. Has Loaf behind following, but unknown route intercepts it out of the air. CCRL captain gets a trickling ball towards the blue goal, but that will be a demo and a clear for Juniata, breaking that pressure for the moment. And a huge counterattack opportunity. The flying V from Juniata is not able to turn it into a goal to break this ice. A trickling ball towards the opposing net. Are we going back to the water analogies once again? I'm all for it. Call me on board because we're sailing a ship. An unknown route. He knows the route to or shoo shoo. Rips a shot off to the backward. Is there anybody there? Blade is in the triple commit area. No caps and can he sink that ship of the opposing side? And it might actually just be Blade. This hand was hanging in front of the goal for so incredibly long. But we do go into overtime here. Hyferia, I couldn't breathe during those last seconds. That was such a great opportunity for Juniata and such a clutch defense for center. But that has been the strongest game. Oh no, the own goal! Oh no, Captain picks it up! What was this? Blade! Oh no, Blade! That is the worst outcome you could expect in a game three. An absolute heartbreaker. I guess you could say he blade himself. What? Okay, <laughs> we'll go with that. We'll go with that. <laughs> that is ridiculous. I don't know what's just happened, man. I, uh, center. One, that is what's happened, and we don't end it in game game three. It is Junior who have to fight back. Oh, my word. It was a little bit of a ridiculous end there. <laughs> As Blade own goals. I don't know what to say anymore. That was very, very unfortunate. Trying to pre-flip, trying to speed up this way back and covering the net instead, just finding that bounce. I don't think you could do that on offense or defense again if you tried. I know I sure couldn't. But that might scored. be the changer that you need for center to get back into this game. I always score the best goals on my own goal, to be fair. <laughs> I, I have some absolutely amazing redirects that go into the back of my own net. At the time, I'm not happy with it, but to be fair, 10 seconds later, I'm like, <laughs> my teammates are quick chatting me right now, but they, they know, they know that was a beautiful goal right there. And I guess that's what they're going to have to rule with as well, Junior. So the fortunate thing is that they were pretty controlling in the matchup and we're up 2-0. and oh. Now only up 2-1. and one. So Center have closed that gap a little bit, but they still have two more to go if they want to bring this home. It's a reverse sweep that they have to bring it here.
They could just be up to the task. And they were looking a little bit better, but they need to replicate that once again. And low from awkward off the side. Well, everything is just going awkward right now. But it's Captain who runs away with it. Show with an early challenge. Puts that right back in towards the opposing half. We talked about the first game. Nothing was turning awkward. This game so far, everything has been awkward for center. Juniata doing a great job with that pressure, but they're going to finally crack a great offensive here from Loth. He's looking to beat all three defenders, popping it up towards the net. Great movement by Unknown Root. Looks like that's going to not turn into a goal just yet. Oh my. Captain now with a shot and blade intercepts and making sure that the goal stays clear. And to be fair, he did have three saves, so basically he went only he went plus two in that final game. Let's just put it that way. Loaf, can he be the first ball or first responder to this ball? It seemed like he was. And then was a little bit of a 50 coming in, and now Blade taking over, taking that towards the opposing half. Caps and intercepts and making sure that, that stays in towards that corner where no opportunities can arise itself just yet. Zappakis closing down that gap early with a boost. He won't be able to follow. Loaf will be able to very much do so. And that pop in towards the center is just going to be taken out to the side by Blade. Blade has been a consistent force of nature here for Juniata. Probably one of the most consistent pieces of the offense here. Getting a lot of setups, getting a lot of uh, shots on goal. But even then, though, the rest of his team... Oh, was that a ground pinch to send that all the way downfield? That was a lot spicier than I expected. Yeah, sometimes when you hit the ball at the perfect moment, and then it just gets absolutely sent towards the other t other side. I don't think it was a ground pinch as it was on that side when he very much hit it on the on the other side. But it, it, the ball can be very weird. If you get the perfect clear off the backboard, then it just gets absolutely sent flying. And well, shoo, he sends everybody flying as well because he made a goal explosion happen here, just dunking on the opponent. Shu coming in here, putting a little bit of the sauce on that. CCRL captain was going to whiff that anyways, actually. So a little bit out west of the ball. And that's been an uncharacteristic mistake. Captain has been very consistent in the backfield this game. And with that whiff, with that dunk, might be opening the door for Juniata to close this out. That was also the, the, what happened the last time. I'm a big fan of history in general, but... I don't really know whether history will repeat itself here as oh, they could just make it happen here. Sensor don't manage to put it through. And then they have to scramble back on defense. Double commit coming in from the junior side though. Uh, the goals that are happening are beyond me. I'm not smart enough for this. Root kind of making up for uh, the, <laughs> the own goal last game with a very similar landing goal out of control, but not out of momentum. I mean, sometimes it's, it, if you don't know what your car is doing, you bet that your opponent also have no clue what's going on. So that's always a safe strategy to go for. Now, Loaf, he, know, he should know what his car should be doing here. It's passing it straight to unknown route though. A sensor, the max amount of goals that they've scored in the series or in the game is two goals and they need to replicate that and plus one to win this one out. Zapakis has the team behind him. They're all close in. Loaf has to go back and get this one out. And that's going to be out to Shu. Shu has the opportunity, but broken away. Zapakis rejoining the match again off to that split screen. Now on the third profile. <laughs> He's just getting a new personality in every single time. Kind of refresh. That, that's a mental reset if I've, if I've ever seen one. Just get a complete new person in here. Uh, Zapakis. Double commit coming in with Capson will be denied by his shoe straight back into towards the opposing side of this Capson will get a demo and they clear out can it be happening and as we head into the final one and one minute 30 seconds they need to get going so quickly and even then I, I I'm struggling to see this happen no no row especially now crossbar down and into the back of the net that could be the nail in the coffin now I gotta say that Juniata here, with the performance they've had in game two and in game four, they do not look like a team that is 0-5 for the season. They do not look like a team that has not taken a match. This team feels like they have a legacy behind them. <laughs> Woo! On the goal line, barely <laughs> out, looking for more center, not able to find it. And that is the heartbreaker continuing the story of this series.
An absolute, absolute stinger towards the back of the net. Oh my word, how was that not a goal? A bar down, bounced about three times and it still went out. That is gutting for center. Oh, that could have, that would have been the road to the comeback, but now they're in the position with 40 seconds remaining. They have to score about 10, 10 goal, uh, one goal per 10 seconds, mental mass. Oh, what a save oh. though by Zapikas. And then the pitch does go in currently their own track. Saunter, that's all you gotta do. If you get the same goal line defense, an insane counter attack, you score the ball from across the field. That's how they do it. In the first two games, when they uh, took their, when they took what goals they got, maybe Saunter can uh, find this out. Maybe, maybe Center can pick up the series. But there's a long way to go still. I mean, it's a long way theoretically, but realistically, they've only got 20 seconds left to do so. And I'm already mentally preparing myself for an absolutely insane loss or whatever. But it's not looking as if it will be the case, especially when Blade massively booms it up. All those valuable seconds going off the clock. It's currently like GME stock. It's just so incredibly valuable. And you know, on that goal going into the back of the net, Blade picks up a goal here as well for himself. And that is going to be Juniata winning 3-1 here. Blade just sneaking it by Loaf to bring home the bread. Juniata having a wonderful series this again this does not feel like a team that has been struggling all season after game one they felt like a cohesive unit and if that's the kind of team that goes zero and five in the season that just picked up their first match then i am absolutely terrified of seeing the rest of this challengers division because they're just doing so phenomenally well to come back into this. So I think we are looking for an interview, and I don't know about you, Hyfe, but I feel like Blade's got to be the MVP here that we want to talk to. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. I was laughing in a, uh, just a second ago as well because Zuppik is, his, even his uh, third personality said GG in the match. Incredibly, <laughs> uh, incredibly nice person nonetheless. <laughs> even though it was a uh, split personality. But yeah, no, Blade is, has been pretty much there the entire time. You really saw Unknown Route pop off at times. But sometimes you don't want to have the pop-off player in here. Sometimes you want to talk to that person who kind of glues the entire team together. And that's definitely something that Blade has been doing. Very, very consistent player. So we'll be getting the chance to talk to him in just a moment. But honestly, I'm just excited for all of Juniata College. That's got to be a great feeling, taking home your first win in a convincing manner. Yeah. Yeah, it was massively convincing, especially after such a massive losing streak, not getting anything going, getting a 3-1 to one victory, put your confidence up. I'll get some confidence going there and we might just be at the base we might have just witnessed the greatest comeback story in the in the entire NECC history and now they're just going to go top of the league <laughs> probably not going to happen yeah. but you know they could just get kickstarted from here that's all I'm trying to say it gives you momentum you you still you're in the tail half of uh the season 2 i mean you're you you only have so much room that you can go but it's better to get a late start than no start. And that's what, that's what I'm trying to say here. Oh, yeah, no, it's sometimes better late than never. That's what the saying is, right? So at some point, you're going to have to start going. Let's talk about Sensor a little bit more before we do get Blade in here. They were massively struggling, struggling to break out of the defensive half, and that didn't necessarily seem to be on the hands of Junior Arthur the entire time. It was really Sensor sitting back and, and kind of having that pressure put on them by themselves there. I, I feel like one of the big things that we ran into with them, because I've seen this team play before, and I feel like this was not an uncharacteristic style of gameplay with regard to how the team played with each other, but I feel like it was an uncharacteristic performance. I feel like they're usually a little bit stronger on the field. And I think a lot of it comes down to there's a very distinctive play style that you get from all of them with a uh, captain trying to play more from the backfield, trying to be kind of the third man, the anchor of the team. 
But if you don't really have the big clears, if you don't land those consistent power shots, you never really get the opportunity of starting that rotational play that allows you to consistently be a third man. Yeah, really? If you're going for that defensive play style, you need to have a proper attack in the side as well. Because otherwise, you're not going to be able to break away. You're constantly forced back into your own half. And no matter how stellar your defense can be, you always have to get down to the opposing side. You can't win a game on zero on a nil-nil scoreline. You have to put a goal into the opposing net. To be fair, Junior also did counter it pretty well. Just getting the, making sure that they had a player far back. We do have the man in here, Blade. How's it going? It's going well. All right, Blade. So uh, this is Juniata's first victory here this season. Um, yeah, tell me about, you know, kind of the road getting here. Uh, going through a lot of teams that are definitely challenging. <laughs> we are uh, struggling mechanically, but I think our practice is helping us get more consistent. Okay. Um, yeah. how, how often do you guys practice? Kind of talk, talk to me about, you say your practice is helping get more consistent. Is there uh, any kind of specific drills that you do, or is it just playing a lot of pubs? What's, uh, what's your style? Uh, well, a lot of it is ranked, which isn't the best way to go, but we do need to practice communications, which I think you can see from that, from that match. Like, I think the first game, we had a triple commit in front of net. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's also, like, training packs and custom workshop maps we use to train specific mechanics. Okay. Yeah. And how, how were the comms when, well, sorry for mentioning it, but after you scored in the young goal, what was happening? What was going through your minds? Uh, <laughs> I was just <laughs> laughing because... It was so, like, everything, I did not expect any of those plays. So first, I, I'm going for left mid, and my teammate accidentally runs into me while going to jump for the ball. And then my other teammate gets dunked, and then I have no boost. I just flip out of desperation, somehow save it, and then hit it in with a double touch. <laughs> It's just too funny. It was absolutely, we were we were gutted for you in your booth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if I think back, it's it's just such a funny situation. I'm glad that you guys can laugh about it as well. You did end up with the victory there in the end. But before we're going to let you go, do you have any people that you want to give a shout out to? Uh, not particularly. I mean, not an unknown route. Definitely handles a lot of things for us. I guess him. All right. Okay. I mean, you you don't need to have a lot of people shout you out. Thank you so much for coming <laughs> in here, Blade. You had an absolutely amazing victory. Oh, my. That was a series and a half for sure there with the stage. And we're going to go into a tiny little break in a bit. Before we do that, though, Stage, do you have any closing words? Uh, I think that while we're closing this out and while we're on break, uh, we need to just give a big thank you to all the people who can make this happen. We'll be seeing a little bit of footage from them who allow us to bring us bring you this Rocket League, this great action from week to week. God, I have been... I don't...
What sound experience would you like to know? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing.
What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing.
Welcome back to the NECC. Our next match features the crown jewel of the Emergence Division, Oswego, as they will put their perfect record on the line this week against the winless Kings College Monarchs, who are looking to salvage the second half of their se season. Excuse me. Perfection and redemption hang in the balance. Lakers, Monarchs, let's get it cracking. My name is Ethan Dolan, probably better known as Nell had. And tonight, I, I believe a new casting duo stage. I don't I don't think the people have been graced by our beautiful faces next to each other yet. No, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's beautiful. I am definitely outshined by that wonderful golden hair that you've got going on. But speaking of golden, I think, okay, never mind. I was thinking that the Monarchs were on the field, but that is just a bit of a flub here. Now, the Monarchs in particular, they've had, uh, they started off in the Challenger series instead of Emergence. So dropping down to Emergence, I feel like that whole unwinning record is completely bunk at this point it is null and void you cannot count it for anything so they're coming into here with a fresh slate as far as i'm concerned oh and one i believe last week they played hood who's also emergence i could be mistaken however uh, it was a two to three win for hood so a long series they did take them the distance and before that they only had one win on the year so very valid point but does not take anything away from oswego who has been absolutely stellar all year long five and oh including three impressive wins over jay Wu dartmouth and rio grand university they are just absolutely rolling uh, what can be done to stop then? If you're coming in as King's Gold this week here, Stage, what is your game plan to slow down this absolutely excellent squad? My game plan is to come in here understanding that if we manage to take this match, if we do that, what we have done is dethrone. This is going up, going up to the bar, going to like a institution and just finding the biggest, meanest team and punching them right in the face. That's exactly what they're trying to do here. They're the new kids in town and they're ready to start a match, to start a scuffle with Oswego, the undefeated squad. So, of course, you use that as your real excitement, the real motivation to take this series to them. Absolutely. We know how mental of a game Rocket League can be. So finding that motivation here for me early on will be absolutely vital. As we said, the two things that hang, that hang in the balance tonight are redemption and perfection. No doubt that King's College Gold wants redemption. They want to redeem that winless record. They're trying to put together that first match win but obviously as we go on the other side they've got a lot to lose here five and oh second place in conference is five and one so they're trying to hold on that elusive one seed moving on into the playoffs a lot on the line if you are as we go here stage what are you saying yourself to keep the nerves cool you know the longer and the longer a streak goes the more you have to be thinking i hope this isn't the week that it breaks now, this is, if I'm on Oswego, I say, we've done this before. We've got nothing to prove. We are the one that everybody is gunning for. And that means that it's their problem, not ours. We keep doing the same thing we've been doing. And that's what we hope to see. Five minutes on the clock, Oswego is trying to just hold on and defend their crown. 
trying to defend their crowd indeed as we are underway here. Solid look, here comes Tsunami, puts it in the corner, trying to set their teammates. Solid pass the center, following it up, can't find anything there. Good bit of defense, Stratarel and the rest of the boys moving up. Here's J. Cole, solid shot, but there is the defense. Big save coming out, trying not to go under early on. Already, the tempo that we're seeing out of King's College feels like it's something that Oswego is not ready for. Perhaps the time in the Challengers division is there, making this a much more even match than it otherwise would be. For the first time, the ball is resting in King's College's half of the match, of the pitch, but it's not going to live there long. Rocket Rob starting the game of ping pong with Headless, kitchen, headless chick, Chicken. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a tug twister there. Jonah Mike coming in, not going to find it. There's Jacob clearing a headless chicken coming through. Solid shot, not quite going to find that lower left hand corner, trying to waterfall down. They can't get the angle. I'm looking for Tsunami there. Can't quite get it to go. Now in the corner, this could be another opportunity. Solid pass, but there's the defense once again. Jonah Mike can't hit over. Here comes Headless Chicken. Oh my goodness, the defense stepping up right now for King's College Gold. The Monarchs hanging on to this tie but here is tsunami looking for it yet again air dribbling trying to lay it on but the defense is there once again headless chicken can't find the goal either the tempo the pacing and the rotations that i'm seeing out of oswego are incredibly impressive this is a winning team absolutely jonamite already up for that pass not going to pick it up but this just the trust and communication and coordination that they have on us we go is phenomenal unfortunately that is a wrong direction pinch jonamite is there to take it away from the net but maybe the coordination is being trumped by the individual plays as a doink in the wrong direction leaves king's college in a bad situation and no closer is available to knock it in Oh my goodness, what should have been a free goal is saved right there. Another opportunity and another save. King's College stepping it up on the defensive end when they need it most. Here's Tsunami trying to play it off of the sidewall, looking for some sort of opportunity. Solid pass right there. Oh my goodness. And the defense just one step ahead. They are holding on by the skin of their teeth. I would love to see the save total come the end of this game. And they're finally finding some offense there. Stratarel going to miss. Here comes Rocket Rob. Does doesn't quite find the contact that they're looking for. Jonamite can't get anything to go there. Played into the corner very, very smartly by Oswego. They can't find the touch they're looking for in the offensive possession will stay alive. But here comes Jonamite can't find the dribble off the wall either. Some sloppy play developing here with just two minutes to go. It might be sloppy, but there's a lot of coordination. The first double commit though, Jonamite getting bumped away by his own teammate. Tsunami there coming in on this one, but again, the rotations and coordinations here are crisp. Even if the solo plays, even if the mechanical elements are not there in some of these plays, there's still always somebody keeping that pace up, almost a bar down for Tsunami, and cleared away by King's College. All you have to do is just get the ball a little bit lower, get the shots a little bit crisper, and this is going to turn into an offensive track meet. Absolutely, the crossbar, the fourth and most important defender right now. Rocket Rob can't find that touch. Jonamite doesn't win that 50. There's a center. Headless Chicken gets over. Ooh. But oh my goodness, the defense is there just in time. The story of the game all game long. That one doesn't bank it either. Me, oh my, are they ever close to scoring. Rocket Rob trying to find something, but there's Headless Chicken less than a minute on the clock, and we are still in a dead heat zero to zero it might be a low scoring game but this is by no means a low shooting game eight shots on goal by oswego king's college just not able to get the offensive opportunities that we were seeing from oswego and this is just an absolutely brutal performance from oswego if they can find the back of the net King's College has flipped the script and dipped the chip here, though, in the last minute. They have found a lot of offensive possessions, but just as I said that, here comes us. We go! Tsunami finally finds the one they've been looking for all game long as that shot is paid through 1-0. to zero. Oswego takes the lead with 24 seconds on the clock. 
nine shots and seven saves between Oswego and King's College. Eventually, something's got to crack. Oswego finally finds the net. They're looking for two. That's going to be wide, but Oswego has opened the door, and they want to turn this into floodgates as we move in towards game two. Ten seconds remain. This does not look like the start that King's College wants. Five on the clock, can they find a miracle? It doesn't look like it. Tsunami, the big hero here in game number one, nets a second goal as time expires, and the Lakers take home game number one, putting that one in the books indeed after after the kickoff, of, of course, on time kickoff. <laughs> but what are your takeaways here, Stage, after game number one with us? We go finally finding the back of the net. They pounded it all game long and all game long. Kings College, the Monarchs, were holding on by the skin of their teeth. Just an absolute bounty of saves. It looks like seven saves on the board. They couldn't quite keep it up the whole game. So my thoughts on that game is if you've ever seen those uh, highway systems, like the crazy super highways with all the on ramps and off ramps that are just intertwining and going over and under each other, that's what it looked like if I would have tried to map the routes of Oswego that game. Tsunami and Headless Chicken in perfect coordination over and under each other, but almost never double committing. And even when they did, the ball still gets bumped out to the side. You find the time, you find the space, you're back in neutral again. Yeah, absolutely. It felt like a great pitching duel in baseball. Low scoring, but towards the end of the game, you knew that one team or the other was going to give, and it was just Kings College defense that couldn't quite hold up. They had a solid stretch throughout the end. I thought Kings was able to net a goal. They kind of flipped it around, found some offense, but alas, it wasn't enough. They couldn't find the one that they were looking for here Stage Game number two, what has to change for Kings College? I honestly think it comes down to just a little bit of the mechanical foundations. I like their speed. I like their coordination. I like what they're doing. I think you've just got to start hitting the ball with a little bit more power. You've got to start just hitting the ball with a little bit more accuracy, and you've got to dodge that crossbar. Yeah, absolutely. The crossbar may have been the MVP of last game if Tsunami hadn't have scored two goals right there. That one looking on target. Speaking of the devil, Tsunami there to get that one out. Not Oh, it's going to win the video. Ooh. Tsunami with a little bit of boost there. Wasn't ready for that one. J. Cole clearing it. We do have a demo there. Can they find something? J. Cole, little passive. Can't quite find the angle, but a solid pass. No one is there to pay it home. And as a result, Headless Chicken should be able to clear this one of these. But there is J. Cole keeping the possession alive. Already a better attack off the gate. What a pinch by Tsunami. Uh, out of the gate here from King's College staged. Now, this is the same thing that we saw in game one, though. King's College getting an early strong offensive performance. A lot of pressure out there. Oh, not going to be on target yet. But then eventually Oswego started to turn on the afterburners and just go to town with their shooting. So even though we've already got two shots on goal by King's College, I want to see them doing more. I want to see them not letting up on the gas. And maybe that comes down to holding the boost. Oh. Yeah, it's nearly a goal bag there for Oswego. They can't quite find it. Jonamite trying to play that one through, not finding much luck there. Rocket Rob playing it into a corner and may just be able to clear this one. But Tsunami, absolutely amazing contact. Jonamite up for that one. Oh, they might have opportunity on goal here, but the bounce is a little bit far, unfortunately. Mishandling the ball here. Tsunami has to play it out of their own half and will get a solid clear. Rocket Rob can't do anything about that, but there is Strat RL trying to keep it alive. Jake Cole coming through, centers it back to themselves, going off the sidewall here. The defense going to be enough to interrupt that goal opportunity. 3-10 on the clock. Kings College finally starting to dial in some more shots on goal here. Still at two, though, in terms of shots on goal. They're getting a lot of offensive opportunity. It might have been a rule one, but a break out on there. Rocket Rob in the backfield there to get the save. But Headless Chicken starting to try to find that offensive pressure from game one. Not going to pick it up just yet, but Tsunami dishing that in. No cherry pick available. Strat RL will be taking it out through the corner. And this just means, though, that we're still stuck in that defensive posture for King's College, where even when they get it across midfield, they're not finding the shots on net. Yeah, absolutely. They're not finding the shots on net. Indeed, as, as I said, they have opportunity. Things do look good. And this might be Whoa. one of them. Oh, what? But there 
there's the follow-up from Tsunami! Oh my goodness, Oswego has needed the help of Tsunami all series long and comes through yet again. Fantastic bit of defense, but the offense is just simply too strong. Oswego goes up one goal to none. Drat with the physics professor save there, just not able to get it away from the net. But once again, a scoreless Kings College is really struggling on their offense. We need to see them find it. That might be, but the team save one more. And there's nobody home to pick it up. Rocket Rob just stalls in midfield and Tsunami is going to start their own pressure game. And what an angle there. Headless Chicken saying thank you very much. Nobody home. The back door just left unlocked. That one, nice angle, but too easy there. Oswego finding a second goal here in a hurry. Minute 35 on the clock here. Kings College has to find some offense. They've got to find it in a hurry. You don't want to go down two games to none to start it out. They may have a chance right here. Oh, they blew it. Looked open right there. Couldn't quite connect it on the other end. There's Jonamite netting another one. A nice even attack. All three players from Oswego right now do have a goal. Now, one of the things I'm looking at that may have been a contributing factor to that is King's College. All three of their players are an astronomical ping. So I'm wondering if some of the 50-50s, if a little bit of the slop of the mechanical elements might just be because they're having a hard time with the server. We can see Strat RL looks like he's driving around in no man's land. In fact, they're just having a really hard time. Tsunami is going to be the one who dunks this away, but something is very visibly wrong. Yes, yeah, Stratorel, uh, J. Cole's both like they just gave up on that play. Rocket Rob getting bumped out of existence. Not sure what's happening with the team, whether it is paying or some sort of mental fortitude, some kind of lapse there, but it does look like but potential, no, no one's moving there. We finally do have some life here out of this King College team. Everyone does appear to be moving except for Strat RL. Uh, I guess we'll keep a tab on this as the game develops, but as it sits right now, Oswego with a four goal lead, pretty untouchable with just over a minute on the clock. I mean, this feels like it's one of those martial arts movies where there's the training montage where you got to put the blindfold on and just try and fight. At this point, I mean, they're driving around. They are moving on the side of King's College, but it's very apparent that they don't know where their opponent is. That they don't know where the ball is. They're just trying to hopefully luck into something. Yeah, I think we might see a disconnect. Uh, Stratorel in chat saying that the team's been having issues all week, saying no problem just to play it through. So it looks like that's what they will do. And ironically, may have gotten one of their better offensive looks. There. It looks like Jay Coles is back in the game here. 30 seconds on the clock. Feels like a futile effort here, obviously, getting into this one. But should still try to get a goal for some momentum as Tsunami can't quite find the angle. Headless Chicken can't clean it up either. 20 seconds to go here in game number two. And this turns into a bit of an air show as there is a little bit of mercy going on and Oswego is just practicing their mechanics looking for maybe one of those clips to put onto their uh, yeah, social media after this is all over. Find themselves a fancy goal. Who cares if it's undefended, right? Absolutely. And whatever gets the recru recruits right, it's John might try to keep this one up. And we may just get our clip yet. That one knocked down. They do keep it alive. Headless Chicken looking for something. John might in the air, and that one's going to be played down. But nonetheless, Oswego will walk away. Our game two winners, a scoring outburst potentially fueled by some ping problems as they do take game number two in a 0 2 hole. Kings College, the Monarchs, what? What can they do with their backs against the wall? So, I mean, obviously we can talk about their ping, but that's not anything that they could do about it. More about it right now is I still think it comes down to just the raw mechanics. In this situation, before they started having problems, just everything, they weren't getting the power clears they needed. They were being starved of boost. And it's so hard to internalize when you're being pressured, where the boost is available, when it's going to show up. So you've got to find some way of getting the power clear off the backboard, defending your backboard, defending your corners, or just finding those good half volleys to send you all the way downfield without needing to burn too much boost. Yeah, absolutely. And it looks like the players are weighing their options. So like we... 
they may take a small break to uh, maybe reset their router as it is looking. We'll just wait on word from our producer here. Um, yeah, uh, we'll see if this does clear up some of the technical difficulties for them because as it sits, five minute break, we are going to go to a quick ad. Don't go anywhere unless it's to the fridge because we'll be right back with some more Rocket League. What sound experience would you like to know? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. Welcome back to the NECC. We're hoping, fingers crossed, everyone in chat, hey, 
Cross your fingers at home right now, all right? I don't care where you're watching from. I don't, I don't care if you're in public. Just send it high. Fingers crossed that the ping does stay solid here for the Monarchs because they will need all the help they can get down two games to none here early on stage. What are we looking at here heading into game number three? Well, hopefully we're looking at better connection, but more than that, my big concern is how well do you stay warm when you've got a five minute break? Rocket League is such a mechanical game and it is not uncommon to see players talk about just any time at all outside of the game is just, okay, my hands are cramping up. They're not doing what I want them to. My mechanics aren't warm anymore. So even more than the technical end of it, I'm wondering if the mechanical end is going to change in any of these players or if we're still going to see the well-oiled machine out of Oswego in game three here. Yeah, and we're about to find out as game three is underway. Oswego going up against King's College, trying to preserve that perfect record that they've got coming into tonight. Looking absolutely amazing so far, trying to seal the deal on a sweep. Headless Chicken to come through to prevent that goal. Solid bit of defense to start. But who is this King's College team? J. Cole, we have seen them come out on fire in the past two games and much like right now they just could not find the back of the net headless chicken able to clear that one here's rocket rob on the other end trying to play it out of the corner solid shot not going to go and headless chicken coming through putting it in scoring early here in game number three absolutely lethal striking from headless chicken closing this one up or opening it up rather yeah, King's College had their opportunities, but not finding anything on target just yet. They need to start really finding their accuracy, working on their precision, and trying to open this one for themselves to make it into a game four. Yes, an errant shot there almost looked like a nice setup. Johnamite trying to set it up. Headless Chicken can't get there. Johnamite, no angle there. In comes Tsunami. Can they find their second goal of the game? It seems like for Oswego, when it rains, it pours. They just got to find that first goal to do the rest of the damage. Johnamite able to get on top of that one. Looked like a solid shot opportunity. Headless Chicken coming through to clear that ball. There is a demo. Rocket Rob trying to play it out of the corner and will be able to clear it to the opposing side. Tsunami. Not going to have the angle there. Can they do something here? Kings may have an opportunity. Bit of a three on one on the other end, but there is Headless Chicken cleaning it up. Yeah, Headless Chicken has been a dominant force so far. Headless Chicken up again, looking for another goal. Not going to come out just yet. And Jonamite, there is so much cohesion between this Oswego squad. It is so impossible to find a weak link or any opening. And that means that King's College just has to force it. You can't just expect a mistake to punish. You've got to force those rotations. You've got to stretch the zone defense, and you've got to have follow-ups to your shots. And right now, that's not happening. Yeah, absolutely. Kings looking for another opportunity here. In comes Rocket Rob. Good clear by Jonamite. The follow up from J. Cole. Not going to find anything there. Tsunami been absolutely phenomenal all series long. Can't keep that one up. They may have another opportunity here. Solid look. No follow through. Jonamite able to get on top of that one. And Headless Chicken clears it from the other end. And keeping the possession alive there. Winning that 50 off of the wall. In comes Tsunami. Trying to find a center. Going to get it up. Stratorel going to miss. J. Cole, the one to clear it. Another potential opportunity there, but a good bit of defense from Oswego once again. One thing I want you to keep an eye on here as we come down to the second half of this game is take a look at the recovery speed that we see from these teams. I feel like a lot of the punishment that we get is from over rotations. Now, having a shot on the goal, but Oswego is there to pick it up out of their own corner. And once again, the recovery speeds are just a little bit slower than you need to see to turn these counterattacks into real opportunities. And this Ooh. might be the opportunity. No, King's College getting driven away, getting stopped in the backfield. Oswego still has the pressure in their favor. Yeah. Jonamite couldn't quite find it there. Rocket Rob on the breakaway. It's going to go high once again. Oh my gosh. King's College got to stop hitting the gym. All of their shots just a little too much, a little too strong on the boost. They can't find it, but here's an opportunity. Good 
clear to the corner right there. Can't find it. Jonamite contending for the ball. There goes Headless Chicken. Solid shot. There's the save from Rocket Rob. Tsunami on the follow up. Looking for the waterfall. Double tap. Lays it down. But there is the clear. A minute and 10 to go. Kings, their series is on the line. Opportunity there, but there's Jonamite. Follow up. J. Cole can't get it to go. They continue to play it out of the corner. There's a center, but no one there to clean it up. Strat RL a little bit slow on the uptick. 55 seconds to go. 55 to go, and Strat RL trying to find this out of the backfield, but once again, these opportunities not panning out for King's College. Looking for one more of the passing play this time. That's new. They need to have someone up there to take it off the backfield, but again, defending the backboard as we go, not letting any opportunities through. One saved at the last moment by Jonamite. What a ripping shot. Wow, and Jonamite comes up big again. Clearing that one out, not sure if it had an angle on the goal, but the follow-up was in the vicinity. Another clear right there. Kings has to make a move, and they have to do it now if they want to extend the series. Jonamite can't quite get there. This could be an opportunity on the missed Jonamite clear. Here's a chance going up. Oh, solid defense. Tsunami trying to clear. Five on the clock. Four to go. I don't think they'll be able to keep it alive, and there it is is Oswego pitches a shutout. I don't think they let up one goal all series long. They will improve to 6-0 on, on the year. That's their second straight sweep and their fourth straight sweep overall. This team is hot. Somebody grab the of gloves, whoever's <laughs> playing them next. I think we need an extinguisher after that. Oswego, the Lakers. What a performance, absolutely dredging King's College Monarchs. But overall, I think that King's College did play a solid game. They just couldn't find the goals. They couldn't find the shots. As we go, their coordination, that interweaving, well-oiled machine that I talked about in game one is just unstoppable. This is why they are undefeated. Yeah, and such a balanced team, not giving up any goals, and they were able to put some of their own on the board. I'm interested to see if any team in the emergent division has any hope of putting something together. Uh, watching this film, it's got to be pretty discouraging. There's not many holes that I perceived, not much to look at and say, hey, this is how we exploit them. This is how we take advantage of the Lakers. They just look so good top to bottom the whole way through. The only way I think if you want to take a game off of Oswego, there's one thing that you can do, and that's just grind, grind, grind away at strikers training. You've got to not only get one shot, you've got to have the follow ups, the rebounds, because once the only way you beat them is by making your own opportunities. Absolutely couldn't agree more stage. Do you have any more thoughts before we head to a quick break here? I think that I've said all that I really can say. Congratulations to Oswego College continuing their undefeated streak. We'll be heading to a break, but thank you for tuning in. We will have more Rocket League action for you in just a moment. What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir.
Sounds amazing.
What sound experience would you like to have? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. Welcome back to the NECC. Our next matchup has us in the midst of the wild, wild west in the Champions League. Lincoln Land Community College looks to bounce back after falling victim to a main case of Bronco Mania last week. They'll take their 3-2 and two record against the Grizzlies, who are just one game back of the loggers at 2-3. and three. Tonight, Montana will have a prime opportunity to prove that they belong amongst the best in the West. Grizzlies, loggers, let's get it cracking. My name is Ethan Dolan, probably better known as Nellhead. And tonight, I am joined by the most handsome man in all of Rocket League, bar none. Grant, how are we feeling about this series? Oh, we're feeling great. You got the loggers, you got the Grizzlies, and I'm ready for it. Now, the only thing is, Lincoln Land Community College came off of a bit of a tough loss and a bit unexpected, if you will, against Boise State Blue last week. It was a big shocker for me, especially after their dominant performance the week prior. And I mean, just looking at their record as we go down the list. 3-0, 3-0, 1-3, 3-1-1-3. So there's plenty of 3-0s and three ones, three game wins. It's going to be interesting, but they've also got an, I don't even know if I would say dark horse in this division, but Montana is also kind of one of those teams that's just back and forth on the bubble. They're pretty even, but loggers we know have some firepower. That's a I love referring to this division as the wild, wild west. When you take a look at the standings, you've 
got both teams from Alabama firmly at the top, 5-0, and 4-1, oh, and one, and then three to the bottom at seven, two games separate, third place and seventh place. Everybody has their guns loaded. They are just ready to shoot in each standoff. Lincoln Land has looked like a fantastic team. Grant, they've put together some great games. We've also seen their the pressure just absolutely burst their pipes and break on the defensive end. We've seen Montana put up some solid performances. Every team in this Western division outside of the two schools from Alabama are so neck and neck. They are so close. And as a result, every single game has lived up to the hype. And I'm sure this one will not be an exception. Oh, you're absolutely right. I was just about to get there with it not being an exception. This one is going to be one of the best that we see because I'm all I'm just a sucker for these evenly matched teams. Those who have similar records play similar. And, you know, looking at our notes, we've seen I mean, just not even just the notes, but looking back at the VODs, we see these teams take on a very similar style when it comes to attacking, playing against each other and with each other, finding your teammates with those connections. We know we got to look Look out for sloth on the oh, loggers yeah. because they cherry pick every day of the week monday they're at the grocery getting cherries tuesday they're at the orchard getting cherries wednesday it just keeps going they will grab those cherries and spike them down into the net whether you like it or not Absolutely. Cherry picks, redirects, no matter what you want to call it. Sloth always on the opposite end. If the day ends in wise, there are cherries to be had. Excited to see how that's dealt with from the Grizzly side. It looks like we're going to have to remake the lobby here uh, quickly. Uh, but yeah, very excited to see how the Grizzlies deal with that. Grant, my big thing about cherry picking is what can you do on the defensive end? You're playing a member down a lot of times. We see Slothish kind of leaking uh, out before necessarily the ball is cleared. What can the Grizzlies do to take advantage of that coming in? Well, one thing, I mean, first of all, you got to look out for it. You got to realize and have that field awareness when there are two players back. And when you start wondering where's Sloth, that's when you know you're in danger. And you got to be on the lookout for that. You got to expect the pass and try to get into the way, interrupt it, intercept it, send it back out over to the other side. Like, let's say, for example, the ball is coming on the left side. You want to put it back over to the right side and make sure somebody's positioned there, especially in a defensive scenario or. I mean, really any scenario that someone's trying to cherry pick, you want to make sure you have an effective clear to one of your teammates to bring back the pressure the other way, bait out that cherry picker and then leave two to three against the defense. Yeah, absolutely trying to stack the odds in their favor when going up against Slothish here. Grant, outside of just being proactive and trying to stop the cherry picking what can Montana do to replicate the success that we saw Boise State had a game that was just so phenomenal last week? It felt so neck and neck most of the way through each of the games, but there came a moment. There came a moment where Boise State found the crack of the armor and they just poured goal after goal after goal on. What can the Grizzlies do to find similar success against this talented logger squad? I think it's find your MVP and feed the ball to them because that's what they did. We had instinct on Boise State Blue last week. Just take advantage and take liberty with any ball that was given to them in a much similar way that Sloth was cherry picking. Instinct was constantly striking. Their shot placement was out of this world. Their pressure was out of this world. They dominated the net. They had like three goals in the span of a minute, I'm pretty sure, at one point in the game. You got to be accurate. You got to be quick. You have to just be the best player on the field. And you also have to go in with that mentality as well to get yourself there. So feed the ball to your MVP. I think that's my solid answer. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's some solid advice looking over at the logger squad. The person I have my eyes on is not the affirmance in Slothish. It's not get over, but it's Becky this week. What can Becky do? I've seen a lot of solid defense from get over. We've seen a lot of goals from Slothish. Becky feels like the glue piece here. The one that ties those two very distinct play styles together. I'm looking for some big things. I, 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 just, I just got a feeling it's, it's a Becky night. All right. It's a Becky night. <laughs> I mean, it could be. Uh, I'm not. I'm gonna do it. 
No, I'm not. We'll, we'll save that. We'll save that for later. Once we get into the game, I think I think the memers out there know exactly what I'm trying to reference Grant's in my head here. has got something preheating in the oven. Watch out! Something, Watch out! Something. The biscuits might be ready eventually. We got to give them a couple more minutes, especially as we have to get our teams in to the oven. That just sounds weird now. Anyway, what I'm saying here, Becky, like you're asking me, I think Becky is kind of that second and third man hybrid. They can either make some assists happen. They can get a goal every now and then. It's a rare occurrence, I would say. I think they play a lot like I do. I'm just kind of there to back up my team. But when I need to step up, I absolutely can. I think that's the case for Becky and as well as Get Over, who is more of that solid third man role. This could result in a lot of passive play from Lincoln Land, especially after what we saw last week. They were a bit more on the passive side, unable to really get the ball to slothish and so they suffered a little bit more than they would have liked to so becky just needs to be there and be a more aggressive presence as get over stays in the back or flip-flop those roles i think those two do a great job at being interchangeable and flexible on the field yeah, absolutely. And one of the exciting things when you do look at this logger squad for me, Grant, is looking forward. This is such a young team. Becky, a freshman. Slothish, a sophomore. Get over a sophomore. So we talk about how they had some goals poured in them by the Broncos last week. A lot of mental errors. This team is still very young. The NECC should take note. They, they should really be thinking about this because this team is so young. When that mental game catches up with their mechanical prowess, this could be a team that is dominant one year, two years down the line and is absolutely contending mm -hmm. for an NECC championship. So I just want to make sure we're keeping that in mind as well. This is a team to watch to grow, not only over the course of this season, but also over the course of the next year or two to come. Loggers Poggers is not done just yet. <laughs> yeah, they are not done. And you're right. It's awesome to watch these young teams grow as well, starting out in their, I guess, young roots here, but they are going to grow into a great redwood tree. Whether or not that is a tree that exists out there, they're going to make it exist. They're going to steal seeds and plant them in their own soil. They're going to grow. But the thing we got to focus on is how fantastic they are right about now being those young sophomores and freshmen. I'm really interested to see how they play. And like you said, you're interested as well to see how they grow and into those trees. We'll go with that analogy for the rest of the night, but we are getting all of our friends on the field. The players are ready to go. It's time for the Lincoln land community college versus university of Montana, fresh clock or rocket league to go and get us start us and there it is slothish up to becky but shut down by high crew those are those cherry picking moments that we got to watch out for and we saw the defense get involved a little bit more now high crew's got a shot but the accuracy like i said is also going to be the deciding factor as to whether or not montana can take down these loggers Absolutely. AZ may have had a shot on goal there, but couldn't find anything trying to play it off. And there is AZ. Becky coming through. I'm telling you.